What's up guys, Tugi here, back again, and it is time, NHL 19 is here. And to kick things off, what better way is there to kick things off on this channel than going with a good old-fashioned draft to glory series, especially with the changes to scouting within franchise mode. And let me tell you, it is a game changer, and you will see that throughout the course of this series. Now, you know by the thumbnail and by the title already that we are going to be using the returning California Golden Seals using the 32nd team expansion draft with custom rosters. I haven't updated much certain contracts. The roster update was as of August 20th, so I had to add in things like the Hannafin contract, Blake Wheeler's new deal. Aside from that, I have not done much though. My major roster editing will come at a later time probably after the season begins and EA releases their first roster update. Uh, they'll, of course, add players in for me. I say for me, you know, so that I don't have to do it myself, essentially. They'll update player pictures, stuff like that. So for this series, there might be some overalls and potentials that I disagree with, that you disagree with. We're just going to have to let that be for now because I do not have time to go through and change everything. It's not perfect, but who knows, maybe it'll get there. That said... Again, using the California Golden Seals, we had a couple of different options as far as what jersey to go with, but unfortunately, uh, we were only had the one logo. The two different logos that they had in their history, this was the one in the game. Our AHL team, so proud of this, the North Bay Doolin Narwhals. I was going to go with the fighting Narwhals. It didn't fit. But the California Golden Seals, they used to play, fun fact, in Oracle Arena, home of the Golden State Warriors. Same building, just a different name. So we're bringing them back to where they used to be. So excited for this. The one change we are going to make though to the divisions, I am going to move Arizona to the central. It was Arizona or Vegas that was going to be moved. Let's move Arizona. Uh, and again, we'll be in the same division with the Vegas Golden Knights, the other California teams. It works out quite well. As far as the setup, owner mode's gonna be off. And I have to admit, I'm still very disappointed in owner mode for one reason and one reason only that is that certain arena uh let's go with assets even though that's not the right word everything degrades too quickly still that was a problem in nhl 18 it's still a problem now where it's really tedious and just flat out a pain in the ass to try and keep up with the fact that bathrooms and parking lots degrade much more quickly than what you can keep up with and really to an extremely unrealistic and simply unfun level so owner mode is going to be off player morale is also going to be off for the sake that this is draft of glory and it's just it it causes issues so we're going to leave that off as well fog of war though will be on the big game changer there fog of war is going to be on and again it's a game changer i've poked around a little bit and it is very interesting and i think it'll be that much more interesting for a draft of glory series where we are not going to know you are not just in general but especially as we're not going to know the overall of these players coming out of the draft it's that much more important this year to hit the nail on the head with who you end up drafting i'm intrigued to see how it goes Injuries are going to be off in this series as well, just for the sake of not having to do too much management, especially early on, where we don't have any players that we necessarily care about. Uh, full sims, good to go. Injuries off. We'll go 20-minute periods because it doesn't matter. Cap penalties are fine. Auto saves fine. The 25 years, beautiful. All of this is looking good. Trade difficulty will be on hard, even though we don't make trades. Fog of War, of course, will be on. You can edit the extent that fog of war is on you could have the overalls and everything like that on we're gonna go full out fog of war no information but here's the thing and i was doing a little bit of experimenting around uh, with a buddy of mine bojo ko check out his channel if you haven't already i'll try to remember to leave the link in the description uh, but we were testing some things out with franchise mode and we both came to the conclusion that the best way to handle scouting if you want to make a decent amount of progress is to have it on both so basically the computer will handle scouting for you, but of course, you can go ahead and make your own changes. Otherwise, again, it can be a tad bit tedious, and of course, with the way we like to, or at the very least with the way I like to do things, you guys know at this point, it's about making progress and making, you know, getting to the full 25 years. That is typically the standard in Draft of Glory. We go the full 25 years, especially 
with how quickly the first few seasons go. And as a matter of fact, we actually don't need to change anything there. Normally, we'd bump down the injury slider. We do not need to do that. Let's get this show on the road. The California Golden Seals. I was going to initially name them just the Oakland, uh, the Oakland Seals, but California Golden Seals. Man, you can't help it. You have to go with that name. But I thought it's kind of weird because obviously when they were first included into the league, they were... You know, I think actually at first they were the only team in California. The Kings might have been around at that time, though, too. I'm trying to think back to 67. Point being, doesn't matter. California Golden Seals, let's do this. Now, again, it is the expansion draft. So rather than doing the fantasy draft where we take the worst possible players, we're going to do the expansion draft and take the worst possible players from each team. So our starting roster might be a little bit better than it normally is. It's not going to be that much better, though. So at the very least, we're good to go there. But I will show you guys here with the draft class, and that is uh, that is something as well that I'm interested in. Thankfully, we don't have to go through the regular draft. But here is your look. If you haven't seen this, if you've somehow not seen any information, I am intrigued, <laughs> very, very intrigued to see how this goes. This is what the draft board looks like. Again, you have your central scouting rankings, your own scouts rankings. God, I'm pumped for this. This is going to be so much fun. Let's go ahead and move on to the expansion draft. Now, I wanted to show you the draft board because, again, we're not going to be having the players being redrafted, essentially. From the looks of it, everyone is good to go. Vancouver ends up with the number one pick. We have the fifth pick in the draft. So that is how things are shaping up. I'm intrigued to see what our starting team ends up looking like, even though the majority of these players will be let go of sooner rather than later. And if we select someone who only has one year left, then they're just going to be let go, of course, and we'll sign the worst players possible. So let's see what we can do here from the Anaheim Ducks and like I said I, or I didn't say it, but I do want this team boy the yeah those are kind of annoying but it's fine I, I normally do the fantasy draft but I wanted to kind of help out some of these teams by just taking the worst players possible it kind of helps out with the cap management as well so the worst player on the Anaheim Ducks we're not going to be taking Ryan Miller but we're going to be taking Ben Street Let's do it. Ben Street, Arizona. Uh, not that many options. It might, yeah, it's going to be Kevin Connaughton as the worst option there. From the Boston Bruins, Golubev might be the guy, and he is. Hopefully we don't end up with anybody who's all that good. Thankfully that hasn't happened yet. From the Buffalo Sabres, we have a few more options. Josephson's a 67. He is going to be the guy. Josephson, welcome aboard. From the Calgary Flames, who do we have here from Calgary? Uh, 70, Anthony Peluso is an option. No goaltenders. I have no idea who we're going to end up taking for goaltenders at this point. Carolina, probably going to be Patrick Brown there with the very nice 69 overall. I can't imagine what the goaltender is going to look like, actually. Uh, Andrew Campbell on Chicago. Or Anton Forsberg, let's go with Campbell. We'll probably just end up taking skaters first and then seeing who's available in terms of goaltenders. Unless there's someone like Joe Canada available. We'll take him from the Avalanche and that's our first goaltender sorted. Nathan Gerby, Broadhurst, Dylan Simpson I believe it is. And it's going to be Simpson that we end up taking. Wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have minded picking up Nathan Gerby, but... Again, we're going to take the worst guy possible, pretty much no matter what. Justin Dowling is at the bottom there as a 66. We're not going to take Hadobin, obviously. Dowling, welcome to the team from the Red Wings. Who do we have? The worst possible option. I believe that's Adam Almquist. We'll go ahead and pick him up again. Another, another 69 overall player. It's going to be a nice team, one way or another. Edmonton with Stanton, Malone, or Keegan Lowe. Those are our options there. And, uh, you know, let's take a forward. Let's take Brad Malone. Let's take Brad Malone from the Florida Panthers. I wonder if we're going to get to pick anybody from Vegas. Ludwig Bystrom is going to be the selection. Again, I think we got lucky with goaltenders for Joe Canada. 
We have Mitchell at a 77. Oh, boy. All right. Well, here's our first half-decent player. It's going to be Zach Mitchell from the Minnesota Wild. Anybody decent? Mike Leambas at a 67. Andrew Hammond might end up being the other goaltender that we end up taking. Montreal, who do you have for me? Uh, you have Hunter Shinkarik at a 66, apparently. <laughs> All right, not sure what's up with that, but sure. Let's take Hunter Shinkarik. From the New York Islanders, uh, Ross Johnston in that crazy contract, or Chris Gibson. For the moment, i got to be honest, I'm going to take Sislo over Johnston just because I don't want the Islanders to get off the hook with that terrible contract. No disrespect intended to Mr. Johnston. Uh, Merrick Mazinich will be the other pick for goaltenders. We need one more, so we might end up with another 70 overall guy. Nashville, Scott Valentine at a 66. I'm going to take Grossnick here, and we can change that pick if there's a weaker goalie later on. Uh, part of me doubts it, though. So we're going to go away with Curtis Gabriel here, 66 overall. So we're not going to end up with the worst team possible, but at the very least, for the first time in Draft of Glory, we don't have to base it off of a fantasy draft right out of the gates, uh, which is kind of nice to still have, you know, like Claude Giroux be on Philadelphia, as opposed to it just being completely random. As former Portland Pirate TJ Brennan, welcome to the California Golden Seals. We have the Golden Seals and the Golden Knights. That's definitely not going to cause issues. John Muse is there as a goaltender, actually. That's not going to make too big of a difference. We have our three goaltenders. Let's see who we get here from the San Jose Sharks. It's going to have to be Anton Bibo. He's the lowest overall guy on the team. Um, we don't need to swap that out. It's three goalies minimum, so... We'll end up taking him. That's okay. Let's see. Worst guy here will be this defenseman on the Blues. Very finished. Not even going to try to say your name. From the Tampa Bay Lightning. Who do we have? Who do we have? Tanner Richard is the worst. Eddie Pascal is there as well. But we'll go ahead and take Tanner Richard. Toronto. A Toronto. Toronto. Uh, Vinny Laverde or Garrett Sparks. Only a 70 apparently. Again though. Not fully accurate. You'll notice that. You see Laverde, you see Tanner Richard. You got to remember, uh, myself included, uh, you have to remember the accuracy of these reports. So Laverde, uh, we know what his player type is. We know what his potential is. That overall, though, is not fully filled out. Uh, like with Richard, we know his player type, but the potential in the overall, not 100% set. So some of these guys will end up being better than what they appear uh, regardless, though, they're not going to be incredible players, so it's at least worth it for me to select them. We'll take Bachman away from the Canucks. Don Washington, let's take Liam O'Brien. At the very least here, we know we're not getting the best players regardless, so worth it to me to keep the teams together. And Dennis Everberg will be our last selection. So there we go. The Golden Seals. <laughs> Good to go, some would say. Uh, that is brutal. At the very least, though, you got to look at what the option might look like for you. I'm not sure if it's the same thing every time. But you get a look at what the option might be if you end up using this option for what the expansion ends up being. Uh, we're not going to edit the trade block. I mean, I might have to remove some options, but of course there's not going to be anything that we end up doing. Let's jump in to the draft so again this is the first this is the first big difference between how i normally handle draft of glories we normally have to go through the first season before we end up making picks we get to start this series off with a bang by making a draft pick right here at the start vancouver gets a medium elite potential guy but again we don't know the overall neither do they without scouting him out first so we can confirm the potentials of those top four picks but the overalls not a guarantee and a grinder went third i'm uh, intrigued to see what this draft ends up looking like so as far as our information here uh, it's tough to say but we do have two medium elites to pick between from there though it is going to drop off quite a bit of course this scouting was done for us heading into next season we're not going to have as big of a guarantee so grigorenko high elite but you can see the scouting accuracy legend, uh, that is a very inaccurate report. 
So that is, uh, that is not reliable whatsoever. But what is reliable is that Howard Fergrappen or Igor Kvasha. One of these two will be our selection. Now, Fergrappen is actually 17. Uh, no games played. So that's interesting. I, bet, I guess you could basically consider him as like a developmental player in the U.S. 200-foot game, which is uh, all right. Was he confirmed? He is confirmed as a two-way, so that's not surprising. Offensive creativity and playmaking ability. That's solid. Weaknesses, shot utilization, and reach. So reach, I would expect that to just be for the fact that he's 5'11". Uh, but his shooting category looks good. Puck skills, all of that's accurate. He is going to be one hell of a player. Uh, similar style to Nick Backstrom. Solid. What about Kavasha? Also didn't play any games. Uh, same thing. Nothing to report. Also comparable to Backstrom. Also comparable to Backstrom. Well, on both the Central Scouting ranking and our own Scouts ranking, Fergrappen is the higher guy. Or Fergrappen, I don't know. I think I've heard it pronounced for Grappen because there was a real world player with that name. I think he's going to be our first pick. Let it be known. Howard Fergrappen is going to be the first draft pick of the returning California Golden Seals. Medium elite. Again, we don't have the dead set info on whether or not he's a two way. It certainly seems like it. And we will not know his overall until we get him into the lineup during the preseason, and we start letting him play some games, and then we'll be getting the information. So remember that in the draft this year, you're not going to know the overall of anybody until later on. Interesting change. It's a change that I personally love. So we'll take a look here. We get the third pick of the second round. Let's see who's available here. And I got to admit, this is part of the reason why I wanted to do the expansion, because we immediately get to look at the draft. You guys get a look at the draft to see what to look for. And hopefully we can uh, avoid completely botching this. Now, as far as who's available here, again, we have some very unreliable reports and accurate reports on Reichel and Saprikin. I don't know if we have any gems or busts due to the scouting at the moment. We don't. That'll be something that'll factor in to future drafts, I would imagine, unless it's sorted by the top. It's not. Okay, so regardless, we're not going to have to worry about that until... We head into the next season. So Central Scouting has Dunkley at 35th. He's 36th on our scouts board. Oh, is there anybody else that has a more reliable uh, potential? It's not really looking like it. Nando Eggenberger is available though, picture and all. Nando, you might have to be the guy, even though I don't know how good you are. So it is a mix of pretty much like leftover players from this past year's draft. And computer generated, so that's interesting for that reason alone. Unfortunately, again, it's not looking like the scouting department's going to help us out that much outside of the first round. So we're going to have to hope to get a little bit lucky here. Nathan Dunkley, I'm probably going to avoid these high-end or, you know, these real players just because there's no guarantee. So Boris Grachev, also no guarantee that he's actually a grinder. No game stats right now. This is going to be a very tough draft. This is a crapshoot with how little information we have. Uh, just because, again, we weren't able to handle the scouting on our own. This is going to be tough. <laughs> this is going to be very tough. So probably Reichel or Saprikin will have to be perhaps Walter Cheng as well. One of those players will have to be the next pick. I'm not seeing anybody else there that's extremely reliable. So let's take a look here at Cheng, the offensive defenseman. We still have a minute. Uh, good character and maturity. Offensive consistency is low for him as an offensive defenseman. That's a, that's a red flag for me. Let's look at uh, Artem Saprikin, the Russian who played in Ukraine. So that's not a glitch, I don't believe. That's just to show that, again, by his name here on the draft board, it shows his nationality. He was just playing in Ukraine. So I, at first, I'm like, oh, that's a, that's a glitch. They done goofed. I don't think so. I think that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, nothing there, though. What about Jerry Reichel? Good old Jerry Reichel. Great puck mover. Injury prone is somewhat accurate as a weakness. Similar style, though, to Sergei Gonchar. I'm going to go for Jerry Reichel. Let's go for old Jerry here. I like that comparison to Gonchar. 
will take Jerry Reichel here in the second round. Moving on to the third round. And again, no real point to look back to see what teams got. Again, that um, that inaccurate elite, that low potential, that's based off of what our scouts know about Kennens. That's not to say that Minnesota doesn't know that he's much better than that or that they don't have more accurate information on him to begin with. Let's see. Is there anybody else? Gogolev, again, you can't really trust it. Someone like Ackerman might be worth it. Slight, uh, slight reliability on defensive consistency and balance. Similar style to Al McKinnis. I just don't know if we can trust that, again, with how inaccurate. A very inaccurate report on him. But do we have anybody? Keaton Middleton, who was a Leafs pick back into the draft. Slightly more accurate report on Timofey Yakupov. An enforcer, but that's not reliable. He is 6'4", though. He could be a defensive D-man. He could very well turn into a defensive D-man. Uh, good character, good grit, senses, uh, somewhat accurate at a D-minus. I have a feeling, very little information here, I have a feeling he might actually be an enforcer. Uh, but the fact that he was that high up on the central scouting list is intriguing to me. Uh, Backman also has... Some information here. Leadership ability, balance is a weakness. We know his defense isn't great. No comparable. I kind of like Yakupov still, but Backman could be worth it. Is there anybody else with that little bit of extra... With that little bit of extra accuracy to their report? Not looking like it. At least for anyone who's that high up on the board. So... For me, it comes down to Charles Backman, or Charles Bachman, or Timofey Yakupov, the uh, Estonian who played in Kazakhstan, <laughs> because that's just what you do. Uh, there was also Tobias Ackerman, who I feel like is real. I feel like I've seen that name before. Ah, so Yakupov, Yakupov or Bachman. I think I'm going to take the chance... I think I'm going to take the chance with Bachman. He's four points weaker on the central scouting, but our scouts had him three points higher than Yakupov. Uh, in terms of who our scouts had ranked at this point in time, uh, so I'm not, I, I can't even guess how to pronounce that without it being a bit offensive, so let's not. YouTube, don't take away my sweet, sweet revenue. Um, as it is, a lot of these guys are real. A lot of these guys are real. Teasdale, David Levine, or Lavin, I believe it is. So we might just want to stick with that assumption that old uh, Charles Bachman's the pick. I am going to go forward with him. And again, these players will be in the lineup for us. There's no reason for us to not sign them. That's what draft to glory is. So we'll be seeing the development of these players the whole way through. Let's see who's available here. And to be honest, at this point, it might not be the worst idea to take some of the real-world players. It really depends on who we have available. So let's see. A little bit more a little bit more accuracy for Braden Shannon. All right, we don't have a full report on his player type. Character, work ethic, and compete level. Offensive consistency is a bit of a weakness. No similar play style. He could be a guy worth looking at, though. Who else? Is there, is there anybody else that's not a complete crapshoot here that we have that tiny bit of info on that's projected to go somewhat soon? We have a goaltender. Alexander Datsuk. Could be worth it. Could be worth it. Also, Paul Kudelka, who I at 19, I can only guess, is real. So we'll look to avoid him. Olafsson, though. Matthias Olofsson, that could be a winning pick right there. I wouldn't mind getting the goaltender, but that could be solid for us. Also, Zane Akison has that tiny bit, that ever so tiny bit more accuracy to his report. So let's take a look at who we have pinned here. Oh, let's see, scouted by time scouted. Of course, none of that's going to be overly reliable for us. So let's go back over to pinned players. And see who we have. So, Akison, Olofsson, Shannon, and Datsuk. So, slight accuracy to him being a low starter at 18. 
Let's take a look at Alexander Dotsuk. Unfortunately, nothing to go off of. Weaknesses, lateral movement, and stick usage. Uh, stick usage. So poke checking and agility. Not much else to go off of. What about Atkinson? Good glove hand and puck handling. Little bit of accuracy to the lateral movement. The reflexes, though. That's not horrifically inaccurate either. Atkinson, I don't know if he's going to fall to the next round. I really need to see something here from one of these two. Good character for Olofsson. Sense is somewhat accurate. I'm not really digging that. And then what about Shannon? We've already taken uh, some defensemen here. You know, I, I think I like Atkinson. It's a little bit of an off-the-board pick, but I was liking what I was seeing there. Again, we're not going off of an extremely accurate report. It's uh, it's actually just an inaccurate report, whereas this is uh, eh, it's close to semi-accurate, not quite. Regardless, let's take the risk. We need a goaltender. Zane Atkinson is going to be my pick, and we'll hope for the best there that we've actually ended up with somebody decent. To the fifth round we go. Let's see who we have available. Datsuk is actually still there. We could end up with two goaltenders right out of the gates. Gaspar, there's nothing to go off of there, really. Uh, so Datsuk could work. A little bit more reliability on Kadelka, but again, I'm not really all that confident. Olafson's still there. Mikanov, no accuracy to that report whatsoever. Uh, Koskin Korva, yeah, you're real. I was going to say, with a name like that, you are definitely real. Like I said, I could scout it by potential, but I want to see who's coming up next in the rankings. I don't want to go too far off the board. There is a tiny, tiny bit more accuracy for Kyle Cook here. And playing in Switzerland with a name like Kyle Cook, uh, you're definitely computer generated, so that's a good sign. Is there anybody else here before we get too far down the rankings? Hudson Elniwick also back in the draft. Do we have anybody else? It's not looking that good. Curtis. Dylan Curtis. You know what? It is the fifth round. That could be a solid pickup for us. And actually, you know what? Here, let's take a look. I'll probably end up calling a timeout here. Uh, so Cook is the highest rated guy uh, that we actually have that tiny bit of accuracy on. Same for Olofsson. And from there, Curtis. And then it starts to drop off a bit. We do have a couple of goaltenders here, though. I'd probably tar uh, target Stahlberg over Polzil if we end up drafting anybody else. So let's take a look. Not at potential. If I can uh, remember to not hit the wrong button, that's, that's, that's always an issue, I guess. Let's take a look here. So these are the players that I'm the most intrigued by. The highest rated on central scouting is Datsuk. It's not as big of a need, though. Neither is Stahlberg. There's only one defenseman left, that being Kyle Cook. If I could get Cook, Curtis, and one other goaltender, I'd be pumped. So I think I'm going to take the risk and just go for Kyle Cook here. Although, actually, here, let's take, take a look here. Is there anything? Character, maturity... Not much else to go off of for now. Let's go ahead and draft Cook. We'll take the risk, again, just because he is a defenseman. And hopefully, we'll be able to lock down one other forward and one other goaltender. We do get an offer from Dallas that, of course, we will decline. No trading in draft to glory. I did a terrible job of going over the rules at the start. But that's because I didn't really expect this series to be the one that someone randomly sees and is like, oh yeah, that one, let's do it. I'd expect that to be, you know, the other series we got going on at the moment. Um, but, now's a good, you know, if you're still here after 29 minutes, if you're still here after 29 minutes and you've never watched Draft of Glory before, then you are a, you are a beautiful person. Beautiful. Um, that said, of course, for anyone who has watched regularly, no trading, no major free agent signings. We only build through the draft. You probably know that at this point. I think you could probably tell. I'll do a better job of explaining at the start of the next episode because I'm terrible. Regardless, Dylan Curtis, not sure how good you're going to be, uh, but compared to everybody else, you're at least uh, a better, you know, there's a better chance of you being half decent. We'll take you, and then hopefully that goaltender is still available. Otherwise, it's a complete guess here in the seventh round. And it's looking like that might be the case.
No, it will not be. Liam Stahlberg is going to be the final guy that we take in this draft. So we end up with some defensemen, some forwards, two goaltenders. I would say that is a very successful start. Now, whether or not, you know, whether or not they end up being half decent or not, that's a whole nother question. And that is, that's a question we won't be getting an answer to for a little bit, unfortunately. Now, as far as how we're handling the re-sign phase, again, anybody who can be let go of will be let go of and we'll go ahead and just sign as many free agents as we can. So, like I said, I feel like this was the better way to handle it. So, Mitchell, you're gone. Actually, you know what, really, I just need to make sure that there's no one here that we want to keep, and there isn't. I don't even have to go through all these names. I can just let them go. Uh, pretty much everybody, <laughs> pretty much everybody is going to be off of this team, which is perfect. We'll be able to fill out the roster via free agency. And that way, like I mentioned, every team stays the same. We don't, you know, it's not going to be like, oh, Ovechkin, he's on the Sharks. No, he's going to be on the Caps. It's beautiful. I'm so glad that they added this change. So every single one of those players will be hitting the free agent markets. And we're going to go ahead and fill out our roster as best we can. As Panarin, Zuccarello, Thornton are the gems of this free agent class. And again, with Panarin... Yeah, you know what his potential is, you know what his overall is, what his role is. It's, uh, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. I love these changes so much. And of course, over time, we're not going to have all of this information. Case in point, Billy Huso. You don't quite know what that overall is at this point in time. You could sign him, and guess what? He might be a 75. There is the chance of that happening. Uh, we have some unknowns here. This is the slight change where, again, in terms of signing free agents, even I don't know exactly what I'm going to get. So I think I might go for some veterans that I can kind of assume are still terrible. Uh, they just might not be the worst. Either that or I just sign some randoms and hope for the best, right? So it's one or the other. Let's go ahead and bring on some veterans uh, for their last hurrah. How about former uh, wild great Nicholas Backstrom? Nicholas Backstrom. And again, just the, the full scope here. And by the way, for the record, you can see nationalities on the free agent list now. A Nation United, Nations United, those two series just got a whole lot easier for me. And yes, I felt like going to the store and buying a confetti cannon just to celebrate uh, for that reason. <laughs> Uh, let's go ahead and sign Michael Layton. The fact you're looking for a two-year deal is absolutely absurd, sir. But we'll still sign you two. And then defensively, who the hell are we bringing in? Not Chara. I can tell you that much. Uh, I got a feeling some of these guys are going to be a little bit too good. Michael Roosevelt. Let's go ahead and sign you for the hell of it. Uh, Henrik Talinder. Sabres great. One of my favorites of all time. Uh, let's go ahead and sign him. We are going to have to sign some players to some big money deals, of course. He'll be one of them. Do we have any other familiar names not named Ron Hainsey or Paul Martin? You know, guys that we actually know are half decent. It's not looking like it. Carlo Koliakovo's in this game. Interesting. You know what? Screw it. Let's sign Carlo Koliakovo. Because I didn't know you were in this game. So why not? Is this Aaron Johnson? It is. Former Bruins great. Just kidding, but he was a Bruin at least. Aaron Johnson. Uh, let's give you that max deal for this next season. Nathan Pace, who I'm pretty sure uh, just retired in real life, but we'll still sign him up. Milan Yersina. Or, uh, yeah, Yersina. We'll sign you up as well. Why not? Bring him back all the old names. Not Tom Gilbert, though. <laughs> not... Tom Gilbert, Andre Benoit is also there. Let's sign him. He'll be the last defenseman that we bring in for the moment until we are able to uh, just double check how many more players we need to sign. Forward wise, Eric Perrin, or Perrin, who I'm pretty sure also, also just retired, I think. Uh, Matt Cullen, we're obviously going to avoid. Brian Gianna, Jason Chimera, Joe Thornton. Uh, Ryan Malone, though. Why not bring back Ryan Malone? His uh, comeback attempt at the Wild didn't go that well from uh, from what I understand, but still, this must be Joel Ward. It is. Damn, Joel Ward's 37. Uh, Jason Jaffrey. 
Jeff Ray, let's go ahead and uh, sign you to a deal. Because why not? Do we have anybody else? Jeff Taff. Yes. Look at that gorgeous face. Jeff Taff. You might be my captain. Ivan Hummel. Bruins great. Former second round pick in 2000. Ivan Hummel. Come on down. You're the next member of the California Golden Seals. Because why not? Uh, Martin Erat's in the game. Yes. And then we're going to trade him for Philip Forsberg because some memes never die. Now, do we have anybody else? Dave Steckel? Why the hell not? You won't be that good. You'll at least be a good face-off man, I'd imagine. Uh, anybody else? Derek Roy? That is Derek Roy. Screw it. Bring you back. You're not going to be that good. Why not? Sign him up. Talixson. Eh, Jan Stashny, though. I do have a little bit of a soft spot for old Jan Stashny. Uh, Plakanich, Tuomo Rutu. How are you still in this game? Brooks like as well. You know, I have to sign Brooks like. I have to. He might not be that bad, but still. Let's sign him up for Matt, Falk, Spezza. Do we have anybody else? George. Oh, the 2 2 train. You're going to be too good, though. You're going to be too good for this team. That sucks. Uh, Chris Connor, former Portland Pirate. Welcome. Do you have anybody else? Prust. Yes, we're signing Brandon Prust. 100%. We're going to be terrible in this first year, of course. We're going to be terrible for the first few years, but that's okay. Uh, Molson, I'm not sure what his uh, what his overall is, so we'll avoid him. Gianna, Porter, Upshaw. It's at this point where we might have to sign Marcel Gotch. <laughs> that's, that's totally what I was about to say. Where we might have to sign Marcel Gotch and Tanner Glass. Because why would we not? $15 million? On a two-way? Yeah, are you sure about that? There you go. That was weird. Uh, Steve Pinizzotto. No, no. We have... Actually, I don't think uh, Genaway here is the one that went to the Olympics. It was the other one. It was Chad Genaway. Uh, Ryan Jones, Pinizzotto. Jake Dowell. Yes. And we are giving you all the money, sir. All of the money. We have so much goddamn money to spend. He's going to be the last guy I think I go for here, unless there's anybody else. Like Florian Bush that we end up signing. Bull Duke. Is that Mike Brown and his amazing mustache? It is. He might still be too good for our team, though. Uh, Hennessy, Hamilton. I think we're good. I think we're good in terms of signing players for the moment. Pascal Dupuy. Philippe Dupuy. I always forget. I'm like, wait a minute. I wouldn't have been surprised because, of course, there are some hangovers like Clarkson, uh, who, in fairness, uh, guys like that, guys who are pretty much known, like Franzen's still in the game. Clarkson moved them off of their teams to free up that cap space. We're good for the moment. We will see uh, what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of cap situation we're in once everybody signs. I can't imagine anybody would decline. Let's just spam the A button as much as we possibly can as everybody accepts. And we fill out a roster. I'm going to decline that trade for Borowiecki. Although he would fit the team of having an absolutely awful team. He, he would fit that. Uh, we do need to go to contracts. Now I will say this. If you're doing normal franchise. The thing you're probably going to want to do. You're going to want to handle uh, as far as who you drafted. You're going to want to handle it realistically. In that your first round pick is typically going to be worth signing. Uh, at the very least, your first round pick, and of course from there, you simply put them through, uh, you know, uh, I was going to say spring training, way too much MLB. You put them through training camp, you put them through the preseason, you let them develop and see what they are. For this though, of course, where our success in this series depends on these players developing, we're just going to rush them straight to the NHL level so you can see just how well they develop, if at all. Uh, we have the two goaltenders to sign as well. Uh, is it a warning sign that some players are asking for more than others? Yeah, probably. Could be. Uh, let's see. How many? 37. 37. So defense, we could use a couple more signings. Uh, pretty much we could use a couple more signings everywhere. We have 37 contracts. Let's sign about 10 more players here just to fill out the roster. And yes, indeed, player search is a thing, and it's beautiful. Uh, let's take a look here. So our Temi Panarin is clearly who we're going to sign. I'm joking. Uh, let's see who we can get here. Again, the idea for veterans is pretty much out the door already. I mean, we pretty much found 
everybody we were going to uh, want to pick up in the first place. Unless we really scroll down that much further. Is that is that Shane O'Brien? Former Leafs great Shane O'Brien? It is. It is. Let's do it. I think he was a Leaf. Or am I thinking of Ryan O'Byrne? I think I'm thinking of both of them. I think, I think. Maxim Fortunus. Or Maxime Fortunus, who I believe just retired as well. So these are players you might not see on the roster that much longer. These are players you wouldn't see on the roster at any other time unless it was in a series like this. Matt Gilroy, welcome. Hopefully, two-year deal, that's fine by me. I want one other guy here. One other name, one other blast from the past. I know some people, long-time viewers, are saying, where's Rumble? He's on that team in Germany. Cam Barker, oh my God. Former Blackhawk great Cam Barker. I thought he was still in the KHL. He's on the free agent list here. That's beautiful. He will be our final signing. And there's Chad Genoway. U.S. Olympian, or Jay Genoway. I thought it was Chad Genoway. I'm sorry. At least I know how to say his last name correctly, because it's not Genoway. It's Genoway. That's what. That's the things. You, the things you learn when you look up the Olympic team, and everyone else is like, "Well, the NHL isn't going, so who cares?" Sanguinetti. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. There's some other familiar names I wouldn't mind bringing in, but let's not take too much longer with this. We've already wasted. I wouldn't say wasted, but you know. I do enjoy looking through the roster to be like, hey, here's a bunch of players that we'd never see otherwise and never use otherwise. Uh, like Alex Bolduc. Again, former Portland Pirates. Great. Sign him up. Who else do we have here? This is about the time that we stopped scrolling through last time. Josh Hennessy, former Bruin. Sign him up. Why the hell not? Anybody else that's absolutely awful that wants a contract like Chad Kalark? Maybe. Possibly. Please? Troy Brown. Chris Bork. Yes. My captain. It's weird seeing him in a Hershey Bears uniform because he I, you know, actually left the Hershey Bears for like the first time in a long time. It's really weird. I'm sorry. Uh, Zach Stortini. Let's bring in another face puncher. Captain Caveman. Who else do we have? Brandon Bolig. Yes. All of the face punchers, please. Uh, and Bobby Butler, why not? Also be U.S. Olympian. Sign him up. Anybody else? You have Weiss, Jones, O'Reilly, Pouliot, Skilly, Devin Sataguchi. Returning to the NHL. He might actually be half decent because he only wanted a one-way deal. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, and Brock Trotter. Why not? Sign him up. I thought he was going to be a great player for the Habs. I thought the Habs, I think the Habs, uh, at the very least their management, uh, thought the same thing. Didn't quite happen. Didn't quite happen. I think we're good. Possibly. Probably. Rhett Rakshani, though. Rhett Rakshani. There's always that one other name, though, that I always end up finding because I scrolled for that little bit of extra time, like Sestito. That's who we were looking for. Just a team of face punchers. We might be terrible. We might not have the white skates because we're not allowed to do that. But hey, at least we're going to be able... We, we are we are the, the last stand for enforcers in the NHL. At the very least, we will ice a team of face punchers. We'll do it. Look at that. This team is going to be beautiful. I'm loving it. So let's get to the start of the preseason. We'll set up this roster. And in the next episode, we'll take care of that first year sim from preseason to the next year's preseason. And of course, uh, we're not going to have to worry about anything in the regular season aside from our players' development. We're not going to have to worry about the playoffs because we're not going to get anywhere close to the playoffs. So we'll be able to focus pretty much on the draft. Again, that is what we are here to do with the draft to glory. California Golden Seals, though. I'm pumped for the series. I had to take a swig of Palmer. It's hot as hell in this room. That's how you know. That's how you know we're back, even though I never took a break. If I'm complaining about it being hot as hell in this room, that's how you... If, any, if you ever hear someone complaining about how hot a room is, it's probably one of my videos. Probably. Because it's a... It's a feature. It is. It's a staple. Uh, so let's see. I think we're gonna... We're gonna throw Stahlberg and Akis into the wolves. More than likely. More than likely, just to see what they are. And then defensively, oh, this is going to be a tough call. Let's see, if we send you guys down, that would be too many. 
We have our two main defensemen, Cook and Reichel, where again, we just do not know what they are. We'd end up being under the cap, which I disagree with. There we go. And let's see, so it's, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and of course we don't have to worry about injuries. So we'll send you guys down, we would be under the cap again. So forward-wise, let's call up, who do we have? We have the unknowns, for Grappen, Curtis, and Bachman. There we go, we're looking good. So forward-wise, let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five players too many. That's okay. We'll just take out whoever we have to take out. Again, we have like $30 million in cap space still. So it's a little bit of a mess. But let's see. If we go best lines, uh, we have our face punchers. I mean, this team, in fairness, isn't terrible. For Grappen, by default, ends up as our top line center on a skill line with Bork and Setaguchi. That is a very good sign. So who's not in the lineup? Curtis, Bachman, and Jaffrey. Of course, we don't know what the player types are on these two, so it's a tough call. I think what we're going to do, though, is take out Ryan Malone and Brooks Like. Let's bring in Jaffrey, who right now is showing up as a playmaker. Or not Jaffrey, what am I doing? Of course Jaffrey's showing up as a playmaker. Curtis, who is actually showing up as a sniper. Uh, we'll put him with Marcel Gotch, and Brooks Like will be out for Bachman, who is showing up as a two-way We'll handle it that way. We'll put the youngsters with Marcel Gotch for Grappen. We'll be with Setaguchi and Bork. And then defensively, uh, Reichel and Cook can be together on that line. Why the hell not? And we'll see what's up from there. The goaltenders as well. I, I got a feeling they're going to be relatively bad, but time will tell, I suppose. And then, of course, the uh, the North Bay Doolin Narwhals down in the AHL. I'm excited to see what they can do originally it was going to be newport beach but newport beach is not an option uh so hopefully there's a north bay california if there's not then they the narwhals are in canada now that's just the thing that's just the thing so as far as this goes you know what let's not end it just yet let's go through the preseason and see if we can get an early look although actually we have to handle scouting but we are going to go through the preseason to see if we can get an early look at what these players might be and then as far as scouting goes let's take a look we're gonna have to change quite a few things here because we have all of our scouts of course um quite a few amateur okay it is split up perfectly so what we're gonna do here the one thing you're gonna want to check with every scout because scouts of course do have grades the one thing you're going to want to check with your scouts of course, you're going to click in the right stick to get your scout info. If you hit the right bumper, you get to see what regions are the best for them. So for this NHL scout, he can play anywhere, and his efficiency is going to be fine. Of course, they have their overall grade, but you're going to want to check that region efficiency to see if you actually have them in the best spot possible. The first thing we're going to do, though, is double-check the quality of of scouts hans setzinger is a b grade as a qmjhl scout we'll send him uh the exact offer that he's looking for our budget's full but i don't know if that matters we'll find out i actually don't know if that matters with owner mode off let's take a look at adam bowl a whl scout and let's take a look at nina graps nina graps you'll be uh, the next one that we take a look at, because we had three openings. So we'll try to hire the best scouts possible. And at the moment, uh, nobody scouting. That should change on its own at the very least. So let's go ahead and sim through the early stages of the preseason, and we'll see if we get any kind of development and any more info on the uh, players that we just drafted, of course. Uh, Setzinger accepted. Perfect. Adam Bowl accepted. And Nina Graps, welcome to California. Welcome to California. That narwhal. That narwhal, though. <laughs> All right, let's see. What else do we have here, uh, scouting-wise, just to try and get the max upgrades that we possibly can. So now you can see everyone's scouting. The one thing you're going to want to watch out for is character assessment. 
Uh, if your scouts are checking out character assessment, but you're not playing with morale on, you are going to want to change that. It's a bit of a waste. Throughout the season, scouts won't focus as much on character assessment if you have it set to auto or both. But still, just know that that's a bit of a waste because, again, the morale system's not on, and that's what it heavily affects. So keep that in mind if you let your scouts uh, handle things for you. Now, as far as amateur scouts go, we actually have really good amateur scouts. Like, really good amateur scouts and two scouts in the, the, uh, in the W. Um, we would have to fire somebody here, though. So, obviously, here, Horkoff, you're just, you're miserable. We are going to fire you for obvious reasons. Uh, is there anybody else here? I mean, God, so many of these scouts are terrible. Let's go ahead and fire Erhoff. Here's the thing. We don't necessarily have a need for pro scouts in a series like this. So, I might just go a little bit crazy here and fire them all. <laughs> Because it's not necessary for us to have pro scouts in a series like this. So we're just going to ditch them. I'm honestly not sure if I'm allowed to sit here and hire all amateur scouts and have 20 of them. We're going to find out, though. We are absolutely going to find out. Uh, so Peter Sororkins, let's go ahead and send you an offer. Six years, sure. Why not? Uh, anybody else? An AHL scout, USA scout, Rodrigo Gratton. Let's go ahead and send you an offer. Another WHL scout, uh, Louis Della Rovere. For some reason, Rovere doesn't show up to complete the name. Another uh, QMJHL scout, Rafael Paris. Send him an offer. How many C potential scouts do we have? A lot. A lot is the correct answer. Uh, so let's go ahead, WHL. And let's see, who's the best option here? I don't know. Clinton Del Rio. Or Barbara Nguyen. Or Barbara, uh, Barbara Huynh. I I have known people with that last name to pronounce it Huynh or Nguyen. I'm not going to sign you now, though, because there's a controversy. We already sent the offer to Della Robert. Uh, OHL. OHL. We got a Colombe. Georges Colombe. Sign him up. Why aren't you the Q Scout? That's my question. Uh, QMJHL, we have Paris, USA, we have Grattan. Uh, we're going to sign one other, though. AJ Mara, Abraham Grumet Morris. Welcome to California. And from there, Europe. Europe, we have Andre Nedved, Igor Nachushkin, Milan, James with a K, Camille Fucale. Let's go ahead and sign up old Camille. And you'll be our next scout. In Scandinavia, we have Sororkins. Russia? Russia. Novikov. Morozov. Very Finnish. And also very Finnish. Let's go ahead and uh, sign up old Veronica. Veronica Novikov. Welcome. Hopefully, if I'm allowed to sign that many amateur scouts. With all that said and done, let's go ahead and move forward. Regardless of the outcome there, let's get through the preseason and see if we can get an early look at what our first recruits to the California Golden Seals are going to look like. So let's see. Let's sim to the 8th of October. Uh, and we are indeed allowed to just sit here and sign as many amateur scouts as we want. So for Draft of Glory, that's going to be extremely helpful. I imagine by the end of this, if I can balance it correctly, it's just going to be nothing uh, but the, the elite fleet of scouts. It's going to be phenomenal um, as we will move forward through the preseason here. And again, we're going to get crushed. 12-1 loss to LA. It's not surprising in the slightest. Let's see what happens here against Vancouver. Can we end the preseason on a win somehow? The answer is probably no. 6-2 loss. Right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the lines. Now, I don't expect to have too much information here out of the gates. But as we continue on through the season, we'll start to get a better picture for what these prospects look like. As for Grappen. Oh. Baby. Now that is not a 100% accurate look at his overall or his role. But we know what his potential is. That is of course medium elite. So he's looking like an 84 at the moment. We know his offensive awareness is an 88. His puck control is an 88. The shooting stats are accurate. Strength, speed, 
and he's a playmaker as well. He is looking like an absolute monster. A great addition to the team to start things off. Uh, Dylan Curtis, not so much overall-wise. We do know that he's a bottom six forward, so, eh. Uh, 67 deking, 64 passing. Yeah, he's, he's not good. He is not good. He might be better than a 50. He's not good, though. <laughs> and then Charles Bachman, also a bottom six forward. That's a bit rough. Overall-wise, we don't have as much info on him. Uh, 70 stick checking. We know the puck control and the passing is quite low as well. So not looking too good there for that third round pick. On defense, Reichel showing up as a 59. Looking like a 7th D potential player. Not ideal. <laughs> you got to look at some of the stats there that are 100% accurate. We know he's a two-way defenseman. And then Kyle Cook looking like a top four. At the very least, low top four potential looks to be the way... For him, 51 overall, not completely accurate, but you can tell by some of the accurate stats there that he's not going to be that great. So overall, it's not looking like we did that well in our first draft. Goaltenders, Atkinson's a 65. Atkinson's a 65, right now showing up as medium fringe, but that's not set in stone. So that's not too bad. And then Stahlberg is a backup potential goaltender and a legitimate 47. So unfortunately, Stahlberg, uh, yeah, not not quite what we were uh, not quite what we were looking for. So unfortunately, with the way uh, the first draft was set up, with us not having that much feedback, uh, we just had to make sure that we delivered with our first selection. We did. From there, though, it was quite a struggle. So we're not off to a great start, but we do have our franchise center, and not the franchise potential, of course, but we do have. Our number one center for years to come. The question is, how long will it take us to build around him? We will find out. Season one is coming up in the next episode. For now, we're done here. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you're as excited for this series and for NHL 19 as I am. I am... Oh, God, this is going to be fun. Thank you guys for watching. You know the deal. Support the video. Support the channel. I love you. I love this game and yeah 10 out of 10 outro i'll see you next time